It's an admission he would rather kill a child than to do what is necessary to give him a meaningful life. Is this a good argument for abortion? Do you see what kind of people we're becoming? I mean, I've heard uh, other people say uh, something like, every child uh, a wanted child. You know, It's unfair to bring children into a world where they're not wanted. Okay, well, first off, every child is wanted by somebody. There is no such thing as an unwanted child. Adoption is a perfect example. And tons of people are wanting to adopt but can't. And anyway, unwanted... Uh, as a term, describes not an actual condition of the child, but an attitude of the adults. Hmm. So the, the problem of unwantedness is a good argument, actually, for wanting children. But it's a poor argument for aborting them. The most unfair thing to do to an unwanted child is to kill them. They say, uh, well, the kids that aren't wanted should be aborted before they enter the world. Uh, so just because they don't win a popularity contest, we can kill them? On the flip note, uh, just because there are people who want kids through adoption doesn't mean pro-life is necessarily a good position on that basis. The homeless are unwanted, may we kill them? That's why we don't use these flimsy, lame, illogical arguments to, to support our stance. Uh, it's not about that. Um, I've also heard uh, having uh, more unwanted children results in more child abuse. Uh, actually, child abuse has not decreased since abortion was legalized, but has dramatically increased. And you wonder why, when we have such a disposable attitude about them, since they are viewed as expendable before birth, they will be viewed that way afterwards. Also, it is illogical to argue a child is protected from child abuse through abortion, since abortion is the epitome of child abuse. Give me a break. Um, you might run across some people who take the modified pro-choice uh, position. Whenever you hear someone say, well, uh, you know, I'm personally against abortion, but I don't think you should pass any laws against it. Uh, there's a question that should be immediately on your lips. Simply ask them something like, well, okay, tell me, why are you uh, personally against abortion? What you'll almost always hear them say is, well, I'm personally against abortion because I think it kills an innocent human being. But, you know, that's my personal belief. Follow up with this comment. Okay, let me see if I got this straight. Let me see if I understand you correctly. Uh, you say that abortion takes the life of an innocent human child, but mothers should not be prevented from killing their own children, right? Well, he'd say, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. when you put it that way, um, I say, whoa, put it what way? That's your view. Unless I've misunderstood you, please correct me if I have. But as I understand it, that's precisely what you believe. This isn't a trick. It's not a clever spin. I'm merely repeating what you just told me. That is your view. And it doesn't sound so good coming back at you, does it? Uh, you know, so the only good reason for being personally against abortion is a reason that demands we be against other people choosing to have abortion as well. Because if it's just a bunch of cells, then why hate abortion personally? That's like hating that tumor removal. Ah, but you dislike it because it is a baby being killed. And if you personally dislike it, you should not want other people doing it either. That's like saying, uh, oh, I hate slavery, but support the right for others to own them and to have tax dollars support it on top of it, like they do with abortion. And this forces pro-death morality on others. I have been forced to pay for abortions, something I detest. People who have abortions are forcing their beliefs on the babies when they kill them. Oh, but I thought you didn't want to prohibit abortion because you said that would be, that would then be forcing your morality on others. But see, <laughs> either way, you'll be forcing your morality on someone. The question is, which code offers a good moral? And that would be the one that doesn't kill innocent babies. You know, I'm uh, consistently amazed at the uh, pro-life people out there who reject capital punishment as a matter of principle. But you see, to have this strict pro-life consistency would require more than opposition to executions. It would also require the Eastern doctrine of ahizma, or to harm no living thing, including microbes and mosquitoes. Oh, what about the poor termites that are tearing up the wood in your house? Or the roaches? Uh, you know, you can't gas them, but no pro-lifer goes this far. But why not? Oh, because there's a big moral difference between human beings and bugs. And even the Eastern doctrine of Ahizma, they don't go so far as to worry about microbes, otherwise they'd never shower. <clears throat> so, sure, there's a difference between human beings and bugs, but there's also a big moral difference 
between innocent unborn children and vicious murderers. Pro-life is actually shorthand for the more cumbersome of saying we are pro the lives of innocent children being destroyed for frivolous reasons. But we don't want to say all that, so we just say pro-life. So nothing about the logic of the pro-life view, properly understood, requires opposition to capital punishment. So don't say, oh, well, you got an inconsistency or you're contradicting yourself. No, 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 no. Because ironically, capital punishment turns out to be the real pro or in favor of life position. Executing guilty people is a way of affirming the value of the innocent life being preyed upon by those murderers. On a more national level, if we kill a dictating tyrant who is murdering thousands, perhaps millions, then we are actually loving our neighbor by protecting the innocent when we execute a guilty violator of inalienable human rights. Same thing if I see a defenseless woman or child being pummeled to the edge of their life. I'm going to do my best to knock that guy out, use the least amount of force as possible, but if necessary, depending on how he's resisting, to preserve both their life and mine, I may need to kill him. And these types of things are acts of heroism, not criminalism. People seem to have it backwards. And uh, many pro-lifers are Christians, well at least by name, we can give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but they need to realize that the capital punishment thing is something that I didn't make up. God did. Uh, we read in uh, Genesis 9, 6, um, Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made men. Uh, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, there were 21 different offenses called for the death penalty in the Old Testament. Again, God's idea. I mean, if Jesus reversed his principle, then apparently Paul missed it. Because in Romans 13, 3-4, we read, uh, For the ruling authority is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. For it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath upon the one who practices evil. Okay? And then in uh, Acts 25, 11, we see Paul again saying, uh, If then I am a wrongdoer, and have committed anything worthy of death, so he's admitting there's something worthy of death, I do not refuse to die. He's not refusing to die uh, if he has done something. But, and we read on, but if none of those things is true which these men accuse me, no one can hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. Okay, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, also, Christ himself used capital punishment to rescue us from darkness and death. You know, being uh, saved. He looked to the cross. Capital punishment. Um, a new challenge out there to the pro-life view is the claim that restrictions on abortion actually force women to become parents against their will. An unconscionable intrusion of government into our private lives. Okay, agreed. No one should be forced to become a parent against his or her will. But this is not the situation we face in abortion. Because if the unborn is a human being, then pregnant women already are parents. And it seems morally self-evident that no parent should escape her responsibilities by killing her unwanted children. The only legitimate way to escape from already being a parent is through adoption. So clearly the issue isn't unwanted parenthood at all. If the unborn is a human being, the woman already is the child's mother and should not be permitted to kill him or her just because she doesn't want him or her. Um, a similar argument that I've heard kind of goes like this. Um, well, even if the unborn are human beings, they have fewer rights than the women. Uh, no one should be expected to donate her body as a life support system for someone else. Um, but what a person using this argument fails to realize is that the comparison between baby's rights and mother's rights is unequal. Um, because what is at stake in abortion is the mother's lifestyle, and temporarily at that, as opposed to the baby's life. Um, it is reasonable, <laughs> it's very reasonable, for society to expect an adult to live temporarily with an inconvenience if the only alternative is killing the child. Uh, when human beings get expensive, may we kill them? We would not at all applaud a family for killing their toddler also that the family budget could be spared some additional strain. I mean, sure, there certainly would be more resources to go around if we rounded up uh, and got rid of all the toddlers of the world, but that, is that a good idea?